When we talked about the rational numbers, we said that they can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. So the rational numbers are the exact opposite. You will never be able to write an irrational number as a ratio or a fraction that is composed only of integers. Let's see some of these irrational numbers. Previously, we talked about the integers and how they belong to a bigger set of numbers called the rational numbers. Now, we will concentrate on the irrational numbers and by the end of the video, we will see what is the name of this set of numbers which contains both the rational and the irrational numbers. As we said before, you cannot express a rational number as a, fra as a fraction or a ratio of integers. One characteristic that we find in all irrational numbers is when the is that when you try to write them in decimal form, you will see that you have an infinite number of digits after the decimal point. But the difference between this and the recurring decimals that we saw before is that the recurring decimals follow a pattern, either a single number repeating infinitely or a set of numbers that repeats infinitely. However, in the irrational numbers, there is no pattern that you can find between all of the digits that go after the decimal point. One very famous, very commonly known irrational number is the square root of two. Because if you do a perfect square, and you measure the diagonal of that perfect square, the perfect square with each side measuring one, the diagonal measurement will be the square root of two. You can calculate that using the Pythagoras theorem. When we talk about the square root of two, when we're, what we are saying is that there is a number x that will multiply by itself or square, it will equal two. For example, the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 equals 4. There should be a number x that x times x equals 2. There should be, but let's see what happens when we try to find it. Obviously, x is not an integer. It is a number that we have to express in decimal form. So let's see what happens. If I take 1.4 and I square it, I get 1.96, which is very close to 2. It's not 2, but it's very close, so I would say that we're making progress. We're moving in the right direction. If I go to the next digit, which is 1.5, I see that I go over. It's more than 2. It is 2.25, so the value of x must lie somewhere in between 1.4 and 1.5. So if I calculate it using two digits after the decimal point, I see that I'm getting closer. Now I, uh, now I am at 190 uh, 1.98 and 2.01. So I'm much closer now to the value of 2, but still not there. And I can continue this process adding digits after the decimal point many, many times. And always I get closer and closer, but I never reach exactly the value of 2. You could continue this process infinitely. You will go on forever doing this and what you will find is that the value of the square root of 2 is 1.41 with an infinite amount of digits after the decimal point and with no predictable pattern to those digits. Since we said before that all Irrational numbers have this characteristic. Well, we can see here that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Some people approximate that by saying that the square root of 2 is 99 over 70. If you square 99 over 70, you get 2.000204. If you are working with a precision of three decimal places, three 
dec three digits at the decimal point, if that is acceptable to you, what you can use is approximation. As a matter of fact, all the square roots of integers that are not perfect squares are irrational numbers. If we take the numbers 1 through 6 and we square them, we multiply them by itself, we get that 1 square is 2, the same as 2 square is 4, and we continue 3 square 9, 16, 25, up to 6 square, which is 36. All of the square roots of the integers that fall between, for example, 1 and 4 are irrational numbers, the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. The same goes for the irrational the for the square roots of integers between 4 and 9, between 9 and 16, between 16 and 25, and all of the square root of integers that are not perfect square squares are always going to be irrational numbers. So another very famous, very commonly known irrational number is the number pi. Pi relates the diameter of a circle with the circumference. If I know the diameter and I multiply it by pi, I will get the value of the circumference. Or, saying it in another way, if I know the circumference and I, and I know the diameter, when I divide circumference by the diameter, I get the value pi. And pi is approximated to this value up to this amount of digits in the calculators. They have pi already in them. So this is the approximation of pi that you can find in most calculators up to, I believe, I don't know, a lot of digits after the decimal point. So if I want to calculate pi, I just take a circle I have to know exactly what are the values of the diameter and the circumference and I can see them here for my circle a diameter of 0 0.9541 and a circumference of 2.9973 I am working with a precision of four digits after the decimal point and using four digits after the decimal point I get an approximation of pi by division of this number right here and if I compare what I obtain dividing the circumference by the diameter and we compare that to the val to the approximation of pi that you have in the calculator you see that you have three digits that coincide and after that it becomes different so it is not that good of an approximation so what can I do if I want to be more precise what can I do if I want a better approximation of pi obtaining by dividing the circumference into the diameter? Well, I have to do one of two things. I have to use more precision, which means using more digits after the decimal point, or I can use the same amount of digits after the decimal point, but measure a much bigger circle. So that's exactly what I did. This circle has a diameter of 14 million units and a circumference of 43,982,297.13015,03 units. So if I use those two numbers now to calculate pi, I get this value. Because now I have a bigger circle, the same precision, but now a much bigger circle, I am better I have a better approximation of pi in this case instead of having just three numbers that coincide after the decimal point now I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten digits that are the same in pi obtained by the constant in the calculator and pi calculated by the division of the circumference into the diameter So let's go back to where we were. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom. I have to zoom in a little more. There we go. So now, pi is an irrational number. No matter how big a circle you make, no matter how 
good is your precision of the instrument that you're using you will never find an exact value for the number pi you will never find a finite finite amount of digits after the decimal point and also those digits don't follow any predictable pattern so this shows you that pi is also a irrational number pi has been calculated up to 2 point up to 12.1 trillion digits after the decimal point do we need that that much digits after the decimal point to do our everyday calculations well let's do one here and see how many digits are needed what I did was I look for the mean radius of the planet Earth what I mean by the mean radius is actually the Earth is not a perfect sphere it is more like this the distance from the center of the Earth to the poles is less than the distance from the center of the Earth to the equator but let's assume for now the assumption that the Earth is a perfect sphere and the mean radius is the radius taken on average of all the points of the Earth so if the mean radius is 6,371 kilometers the mean diameter is twice that 12,742 kilometers pi I want to see how many digits how many numbers how many digits after the decimal points do I need to calculate the circumference of the earth with a precision of one millimeter so this is what I'm gonna do the circumference of the earth is the mean diameter multiplied by pi and one millimeter remember is 0 0.001 meters so I'm gonna start by multiplying the mean diameter of the earth by just 3.14 and see what I obtain and every time I will continue adding one digit after the decimal point and uh, what I want to see is what happens with the millimeters which is the third uh, the third digit after the decimal point so I get 3.14 3.14 one four one three point one four one five and so on and so on and every time I observe that I am getting a different result up to here when I reach this amount of digits after pi I start getting the same results so what it means is after this amount of digits I don't need to add any more to have a precision of millimeters because I'm still gonna get the same answer no matter how much more digits I put into my approximation of pi so what I'm trying to show you here is that with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 with 11 digits you can calculate the circumference of the whole planet Earth with a precision of one millimeter if you know the radius or the diameter of the planet so we don't really need for everyday calculations a trillion digits 11 is good enough to measure all the way around the earth as a matter of fact I saw somebody did this this same exercise but instead of using the planet earth they use a sphere the size of the whole observable universe and the precision that they used was not one millimeter it was instead the diameter of one atom of hydrogen which is many 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 times smaller than one millimeter and what number of digits after the decimal point do you think that they found were required to do that measurement with that precision it wasn't a trillion it wasn't a million it wasn't even a thousand it was only 39 digits after the decimal point so if you want to measure the whole universe with a precision that is very 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 small you only need 39 digits after the decimal point so let's recap here irrational numbers cannot be expressed as a fraction or a ratio of integers they cannot be represented as terminating or repeating decimals they have an infinite amount of digits after the decimal point 
and they follow no pattern at all. So we remember here the famous values, the famous rational numbers, pi, the relation between the diameter of the circle and the circumference, the square root of two, which along with the square of all integers that are not perfect squares, they are all irrational numbers. Another famous irrational number is the number E uh, from the famous scientist Euler, which is written Euler, but some people read it. It is spelled, it is pronounced Euler. And this number is the base for all the natural logarithms and also is a very important number in calculation of compound interest. In financial calculations, you use the number E a lot. And this beauty here, phi, is what is called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is obtained by adding 1 to the square root of 5, which, an is, which is an irrational number, and then dividing all of that by 2. You get a number which is approximately 1.618. And this is used a lot in architecture and art and sculpture because it's supposed to give you pr a proportion that is appealing to the human eye. Apparently, humans find this rectangle and this triangle more beautiful than any other. That's what the people that use this say about the phi or the golden ratio. So, as we said in the beginning, we wanted to see what is the name of the set of numbers that contains both the rational and the irrational numbers, and that is the real numbers. The real numbers contain all the irrational numbers and all the rational numbers, which in, which in that set we have all of the integers. So, all of the numbers that we've seen, we have seen up to now, fall inside the set of the real numbers which leads to another question are there numbers that do not belong inside the set of the real numbers and if there are numbers that do not belong in the set of the real numbers do that does that mean that they are not real that's a question that we will answer in another video Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you found this useful, please subscribe, tell a friend, and don't forget to check some of my other videos and the playlist. Once again, thank you, and see you on the next video.